Hi everybody, Steve Griffiths here, developer of the MT Predictor software program. Part of what we teach at MT Predictor is that markets go in cycles. For any of you who have been trading for any period of time, uh, should have actually noticed this, that sometimes the markets have nice clear clean patterns in which you can do some good analysis, then at other times the patterns just seem to break down and markets just seem to be random. So that's what I want to look at in today's uh, webinar with some examples on the USE minis which were unfolding last Friday, which was the 13th of October. But as usual, let's start with our risk disclaimer and remind you that all examples in these videos should be considered as hypothetical. No trades were actually taken, they're just shown for illustration and training purposes only. Remind you there's a risk of loss in trading and investing. Put another way, all professional traders know and understand and more importantly accept that losses can and will and do happen. The trick is keeping those losses small, but they do happen. That's a fact of trading life. All trade decisions, your own sole responsibility. So I want to have a good uh, look at a good example on this on Friday. And this, I think, is one of the hardest things that um, amateur traders don't seem to understand is that because at school we're taught that 2 plus 2 equals 4 and everything basically falls into mathematical and uh, scientific uh, rules. In other words, you, you do something as taught and the outcome is known. But with the markets, that's not the case. The markets go through cycles. They have periods when the pattern's really clear and they have periods when suddenly that pattern then breaks down for no apparent reason. And this is what I call the cyclical nature of trading. And this is one thing that you have to learn to accept as a trader is that sometimes you do the best analysis. And uh, a good example here is on the YM where uh, on Friday we had our 15 minute uh, DP there nailing the very high of the day. In fact, I'll actually just go to the 15 minute chart and show you that. Here's the 15 minute chart. I'll just take that DP off. And just remind you how we place DPs on. So I just want to go be, uh, just after the um, the day open. So if I go back to there. What we do is go back to previous highs and lows. There's a nice high uh, on the previous day. You right mouse click, place the decision point on. And there it is in advance. So that gives you in advance before the market even got there an area of potential uh, resistance. And let's see what happened for the rest of the day. We then turn training mode off. And as you can see, the market went up into that uh, DP and that nailed the very high of the day for you. Uh, the previous day was really good as well. If I <coughs> right mouse click off that previous low, you can see how that nailed the very low of the previous day for you as well. So when that decline was unfolding, that's where the low actually stopped. But let's go back and see how this unfolded on the shorter time frame here. So here you can see that it looked absolutely perfect. Whereas we came into a DP resistance, the market then came down, the market then came up into a TS1 cell. Our MTP trend was uh, grey, turning red because the market trend was in the process of then going down. If you can see that that was actually the high of the day, nailed it perfectly. But this would have been a perfectly valid cell setup to take. So we right mouse click over the red cell bar. We then have a look at this and the market did take you in and didn't quite get to the profit target, was actually sitting on about 3R profit, but didn't actually get there. In other words, after you'd got a perfect looking pattern, uh, the market then just broke down. It just broke down. It just then started to go chop sideways and basically go nowhere. And this is a fact of trading life. And again, it's something that most amateur traders don't seem to understand is that sometimes you can do perfect analysis, but the market just drifts sideways and goes into a, a random pattern. And it's very hard for the amateur traders to get their head around that this does happen. So in our mathematical example from earlier, we have a 2 plus 2, and in this case, 2 plus 2 equals 5, or 3, or 7, or 8. In other words, the sometimes when your perfect um, analysis can just start to go random. And amateur traders then tend to struggle with this because they tend to then throw their analysis out of the... Um, out of the window and then move on to another technique that then does exactly the same. They spend their time going around uh, basically getting nowhere. So what you have to do, and this is what we teach, is you have to accept that about half the time markets will be random. Half the time you will not know what's going on. So you won't actually be able to do any analysis or sometimes when you're in analysis then it can just go, uh, uh, go to pot like this. We look at the other markets, the ES, there we go, there's our 15 minute DP. Nailed the high of the day again, absolutely perfectly. The market was drifting sideways. We wouldn't obviously want to take these buy setups because we were coming off DP resistance. We look at the NQ, exactly the same as well. There's our DP nailing the highs of the day. 
we had a TS3 sell. You may have wanted to have a look at that. And just as with the uh, YM example, the market just didn't go as anticipated. It just chopped sideways. It didn't go anywhere. So this is just the, the fact of life and something that I wanted to have a look at in that, that um, sometimes markets just go nowhere. So how could you have handled this? Well, obviously, the, the first thing to do is get your stop to break even. I mean, here you're on a uh, three hour profit. It was going very nicely. So maybe you want to bring your stop to break even. You have to be careful when you're trading on short time frames. This is a three minute chart of the YM to not bring your stop to break even too close or too quickly because you can get stopped out before it goes back again. If you had have got stopped out, it would have just been a minus one hour loss. And that's why we, why we use position sizing is when the market decides to do something different. In other words, not anti uh, unfolds anticipated, then you um, only have what we call a one R or one risk unit loss. That's why we vary the number of lots, contracts or shares to keep your um, percentage risk, in this case less than 2% of a, well I'll actually go to our normal account which was uh, $20,000, a default sample $20,000 account and that would have kept your risk less than uh, $400. If the market had got down to this profit target, the profit would have been uh, almost four times, can I say four times, 3.9, four times greater than the loss. So when the trades go right, they have large profits, but when they go wrong or the market uh, starts to um, go into a random pattern, then the losses are kept small. So this is just a fact of trading life. And I wanted to do this video because there's far too many software vendors and gurus who only ever show good examples, who only ever show perfect examples, textbooks, they only ever show perfect examples. And sometimes when you get that, then get into the real world, it then gets really confusing because you've learnt these absolutely perfect examples and you're thinking, well, here was a perfect example. Why didn't the market unfold as, an, uh, as anticipated? It looked absolutely perfect. Well, it was a perfect example, but the market had other ideas and basically turned into a random mode and then just went sideways. So once you accept that half the time markets can be random and it's actually not your fault, um, then trading becomes a lot easier. It becomes a lot, uh, um, a lot easier to accept that you do the analysis when the market pattern is clear and accept that sometimes the markets will just go into a random phase. Now, as amateur traders or human beings, I should say, we do find that very hard to, uh, to cope with. And that's why a lot of amateur traders struggle. Uh, typically, somewhere between 95 and 97 percent of amateur traders never make it in this business because a lot of the things they're going after and a lot of the things they're uh, taught by other companies just simply just don't work. Uh, over the longer period in the markets and this is why I wanted to do this so basically dose of reality and just show you that sometimes because markets go random this is what they can this is what can happen and you have to learn to get through this and accept this and get over this if you want to um, move beyond being an amateur trader and move to be a professional trader so that's what we teach in that markets basically are random about half the time or maybe slightly more than the time they have then clear patterns it's like driving a fog the fog suddenly clears and you can see what you're doing they have clear patterns probably about half the time when you can do good analysis but obviously there are times when you're in a trade and it just starts to go random as well so trading basically can be a hard business to be in and there's uh, the actual learning how to trade is not the hard thing. It's actually learning to deal with the psychological aspects, the mind game, so to speak, of what the markets can do with us or how they can trick us and how they can play with our minds, uh, basically because they tend to be random about half the time. So hopefully this video has been helpful to give you a reality check on what the markets can uh, do and just show you an example of when we're um, looking to use MT Predictor, how we can trade in the context of the larger degree trend. You can see here it's great that you actually knew that uh, the market was at DP resistance, therefore you should look to be short so you weren't <clears throat> losing money by trying to uh, pick long trades here, but also that markets can go through random periods and sometimes they can be quite hard. So a reality check for traders here in today's MT Predictor video and show you how markets unfold in the real world.